Welcome everybody to this morning service on this Pentecost Sunday. Come Holy Spirit, come Lord of life. You bring each new day alive with the possibility. You fill creation with vitality and hope. You give each human being great potential. You inspire people to transform the world. Come Holy Spirit and enter our worship. Come Lord of life and infuse our lives. Let us pray. Thank you, amazing God, for the wonderful diversity in your world, for the colours and the sounds, for the creatures and the insects, for the customs and cultures, for the language and the music, for the vast and the tiny, for the young and the old. Thank you, God, for each one of us, so alike and yet so very different. God of the universe, send your Holy Spirit to renew and refresh your world, that we and creation in all its colour and all its diversity may sing out your praise and celebrate your presence amongst us. Send streams of living water where hearts are parched and sprinkle showers of grace and peace in all places of conflict and need. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. Uh, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for, for a day like this, for a privilege like this. We appreciate your holy name. We, we come and pray for forgiveness of sin. And this morning, we pray you, Dari Lord, concerning all the uh, frontline officers, the doctor, the nurses, uh, the kitchen potter in the hospitals, the cleaners, and everyone that have been playing key roles is to the security forces as well. We pray you help them. They've been rendering help to humanity. We pray unto you today, be their help when, help when they need help. We pray to be their help. Let help arise from them in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, Almighty God, we pray you as World Health Organization, uh, as World World leaders from various countries gathering together to fine tune uh, the, the solution to the pandemic we pray to give them the wisdom and as many people that have lost lost one we pray to comfort them almighty god you, you are the only one who can comfort them effectively we pray to comfort them and almighty god we pray for our pastors we pray for our pastor as she is interceding on behalf of all the church in a quiet time we pray you all our prayer let them be accepted before you in the name of jesus christ almighty god in the end help us to make it to eternity thank you blessed daddy in jesus name we prayed amen good morning everyone our first reading today comes to us from john chapter 7 reading verses 37 to 39. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said with a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. And our second reading comes to us from Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 1 to 21.
When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygra, Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and convicts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Then Peter stood with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will turn into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Today is Pentecost Sunday when Christians celebrate the sending of God's Spirit by Jesus to his disciples and followers. It is such an important event for Christians that the first Pentecost was regarded as the birthday of the Church. In Jerusalem there were many Jews from many parts of the world come to give thanks to God and the Bible mentions just a few nationalities besides the Jews living in Jerusalem there were Greeks, Arabs, Italians, Mesopotamians and Asians. The disciples had gathered together there too. They had already chosen a man called Matthias to take the place of Judas amongst their number. As Jesus had been taken up into heaven during his ascension, which we celebrated last week, he promised them that they would receive power when the Holy Spirit came upon them as they waited for it in Jerusalem. What happened touched their senses. There was the sound of the blowing of a violent wind that filled their ears, as well as filling the whole of the house, as the Bible tells us. There was the sight that greeted their eyes of fiery tongues separating out and alighting on each one of them. And there was the sensation of the tongues of fire resting on them as the Holy Spirit came upon them. But what impressed the crowd most was the fact that they could hear what was being said clearly in their own language, even though they were all from different countries and spoke different languages. This was truly a great miracle of being able to understand the speech that had been confused by God at the separation of language when the Tower of Babel had been constructed by the people to reach into the heavens. It was a message that God was forgiving that sin of the past. It was a sign that God was turning around history and taking the throne to reign upon the earth. It was a display of God's 
power, transforming the future outlook for humankind. When the people saw and heard what was happening in their midst, they found it amazing, disturbing, confusing, and at the same time, bringing them a common sense of unity and togetherness. They could understand what others around them were saying. Some within the crowd wondered whether the disciples had had too much to drink, even though they thought it was far too early in the day to be so inebriated. There was so much joy and enthusiasm and excitement, spectacular enthusiasm on display. As a group of disciples, they already knew the peace and the encouragement and the leading of the Holy Spirit because they had experienced it as Jesus had breathed the Spirit upon them in his meeting with them. Whereas that had been a quiet, almost unnoticed event, this time God was going to send his spirit in a much more dramatic way. Their joyful exuberance and enthusiasm would not be what they were noted, would be noted for tomorrow. However, what happened that day was going to change things forever. In fact, the disciples and followers who received the spirit were transformed in many ways. So how were they changed? Well, A.J. Gordon puts it succinctly like this. Before Pentecost, the disciples found it hard to do easy things. After Pentecost, they found it easy to do hard things. The giving of the Holy Spirit to the disciples was not just for that small number of people gathered on that day though. The Holy Spirit is for all those who put their trust in Jesus and follow him in their lives. The Spirit is God's power coming into people's lives. It is God's transforming power being made known in the world through the people of God. The Spirit is often known as the breath of God. In the Hebrew, the word for spirit, ruach, also means wind or breath. The hymn we have for today is called Enemy of Apathy and in it the Spirit is referred to as she. This is in recognition of the fact that Ruach in Hebrew and Aramaic is a feminine noun. In Genesis we hear about the wind or the breath or the spirit of God hovering over the waters brooding like a dove. A good way to describe God's creative force at the beginning of time and in any day or age. Throughout the scriptures God's breath breathes, breathes life into the most dead of subjects and breathes new life into the hearts of those who are alive. The Holy Spirit is not a subject one can sit on the fence with. If a person receives the Spirit, that person is enabled and equipped and involved in the purposes of God. Everything the Spirit does is for the common good and is testable as such by the people of God called the Church. There's no room for individualism but every room for individuality and diversity, as the Holy Spirit works in each and every person as it pleases God, not necessarily as each person once thought they desired. The Spirit works with the personality and the gifts of that person and magnifies what's already there, adding desires and abilities that they did not think they would ever have or even want to have and guiding them into the best way to serve their Lord. The Spirit works as we allow it to work in our lives. The Spirit works with us and does not force us to be who we do not want to be. If we allow it, the Holy Spirit turns a static world of black and white into a world of vibrant colour streaming into our lives. We become aware of new possibilities of putting into use the creativity of God in our own time and place. The Holy Spirit helps us to listen to God, but more than that, the Holy Spirit reveals to each one of us God's message to humankind and God's will for our lives. We're helped to digest what we hear and read and apply it to the situations we face in the particular age and culture in which we live. In fact, it is the Holy Spirit who reveals to us the person of Jesus and the nature of God himself. Through the work of the Holy Spirit, we are able to see clearly the truth of Jesus as it is unfurled before us. As Jesus points out to us in John chapter 7, 
Jesus himself is the source of living water which will well up within our hearts and souls and quench our spiritual thirst for God. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink, he says. And he says, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. This is Jesus' promising the gift of the Holy Spirit which will be sent to each and every believer upon their giving their lives to him. Our reason for being will undoubtedly change for the better with the presence of the Holy Spirit, mainly because we are assured of Jesus' gift of another helper who comes to comfort and direct and encourage us in our Christian lives. The day of Pentecost is important for all God's people because the Spirit moves through our lives like a forest ablaze, burning like a holy fire within our souls without consuming our very selves, challenging us, remaking us, equipping us and enthusing us, making God known. The poet William Blake wrote a poem about Pentecost and part of that poem says this, Unless the eye catch fire, God will not be seen. Unless the ear catch fire, God will not be heard. Unless the tongue catch fire, God will not be named. Unless the heart catch fire, God will not be loved. Unless the mind catch fire, God will not be known. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives. May God's creative love, the transforming power of his spirit and the peace of Jesus reign in our lives as we go forward in his name. Let us pray. God of the rushing wind, sweep through our indifference. God of the fiery flames, ignite our compassion. God of the many voices, open our mouths to speak out against injustice that through your spirit and our actions, this world may be transformed. Amen. She sits like a bird, brooding on the waters, hovering on the chaos of the world's first day. She sighs and she sings, mothering creation, waiting to give birth to all the word will say. She wings over earth, resting where she wishes, lighting close at hand or soaring through the skies. She nests in the womb, welcoming its wonder, nourishing potential hidden to our eyes. She dances in fire, startling her spectators, waking tongues of ecstasy where darkness reign. She weaves and inspires all whose hearts are open, nor can she be captured, silenced or restrained. For she is the Spirit, one with God in essence, Gifted by the Saviour in eternal love. She is the key, opening the scriptures, Enemy of apathy and heavenly Let's say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. <laughs>